Okay. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this session on an intro to qualitative data analysis using Taget and Qualcoder. For anyone who doesn't know, my name is Kathleen Flynn, and I'm one of the science librarians here at UAlbany. And if you're wondering, I have altered the settings to disable participant video and unmuting right now just because I'm recording, and that makes it a little easier. I've also enabled closed captioning, so feel free to hit the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you'd like to see the live transcript. So the plan for today is I'll show you two free qualitative data analysis tools. I'll start by demoing Taget, and then we'll move on to Qualcoder. So Taget and Qualcoder are free qualitative data analysis tools, and I won't go into too much detail about qualitative data analysis, but I'll just say a few things in case you're wondering what kind of data analysis you can do with these tools. So to start with, qualitative data would be data that are usually non-numerical. So these data aren't things that you would usually count or measure, and they tend to be things like text or audio, video, probably generated from interviews or surveys, focus groups, et cetera. And qualitative coding is where you'll analyze that data by assigning codes or labels to parts of it, for instance, text, and those codes may represent some important concepts, and then you can later analyze those to identify some categories or some themes. And depending on your research question, you may have codes already when you begin coding, or you may create them during coding. And as for software, some common features of QDA software uh, include coding, annotation, transcription, etc. And here are some options of QDA software. You've probably heard of some of these tools on the left here. You have Atlas TI and Max QDA and Vivo. And those aren't free, but they tend to be pretty robust. You could also do some coding and analysis with Excel or Word. And I'll note that these first three tools here they aren't currently available on any public university computers, such as those in the libraries that I know of. Some departmental computers may have licenses to them. I'm not sure. You'd have to investigate that. But then there are some free tools. So we'll look at Taget and Qualcoder. You also have Rcoder. That's an R package. Package in R, the statistical programming language. And then, of course, you could have the free versions of um, the equivalent of the Office products you know, Google Office Suite or LibreOffice. So let's get started by looking at Teget. So I'll paste the link in chat if you want to follow along. This is recorded, so don't worry about following along with everything. So Teget is a free and open source qualitative research tool. I'm starting with this tool because it's very simple. You'll see it's very user friendly and it's used to do just some basic coding of text. And that's the key limitation here with Teget is that, as we see here, you can only code text here. So you can import these file types, basically text files here, PDFs, Word docs, plain text files, HTML, ebook uh, formats here. And what you'll do, you'll import some text documents, and then you can create codes and tag that text with those codes, and then you can export your code book and the other files. So Teget is a very robust, but it's it's quicker and less clunky than using Word or Excel for that basic text coding. As we see on the homepage here, it could be used in a browser by going here to teget.org, or you could download it and um, install, and you can run it locally on your computer. You could also run it on your own server. Um, if you do it on your own computer, it might be a little more secure, but using it on a local machine will make it slightly more difficult to collaborate with others, and we'll see that. So we're going to use it on their server. So to do that, you'll have to create a free, and again, you don't have to follow along. Don't worry too much about that. But I'll click Try Out to get on our own server. So here you would register for a free account. If you don't have one, I have one. So I'll go up to log in. And then from here, when you have documents, you don't have to worry about the language uh, 
of the text in your document. But if you'd like to change the language of the interface here, you could go up to account and settings. And then you have language here. They have some options and they're adding more as um, they get help with adding them because this is a free and open source uh, tool. So if you'd like to help them out, feel free to contact them. So then on the home page here, you have a few options. You can import a project, and this is what you might do if you've installed Tegat locally on your computer. You may uh, import uh, um, on another computer. Maybe if you've shared it with someone you're trying to collaborate, you could send them the file and they can import it on um, their own computer. But it's easier to do it if you're in the server, which we'll see later. You can also create a new project, which we'll do in a second, and then you can see existing projects are here. So we'll create a new project, and I'll follow this trend here, and I'll just name it Tagit Tutorial 3. And you can give it a description here. So I might say uh, this is a test project for a tutorial, and I'll hit Create. And from here, we have to add documents. So there's a button here, add a document. Now we saw earlier um, the file types that are allowed, basically text files. So I have one, it's Thomas Paine's Common Sense. I found the full text, it's in the public domain. I found it on the Project Gutenberg site. So it's just a plain text file. So I have it here and then I could give it a name call it common sense. I could give it a description here if I want. And then hit import. So now we see our document here in the middle. And I will say sometimes during the conversion process, the formatting can get a little changed. So this is just a test. So it, this text doesn't matter. So it's fine. But be aware of that. So we see here uh, our text and we can start to code. So to do that, I simply just highlight some text and you'll notice that this little button pops up, new highlight. And if I click that, it, by default in Tagit, it has this interesting tag here already. So you could assign that, you could create your own. For this first one, we'll just assign the interesting tag. And then I'd hit save and close. And we see that it's highlighted now in yellow. Now in Tagit, I believe, I don't believe you can change the color at the moment. I think all of your tags are going to be yellow. Maybe in a future update, they'll change that. Qual coder, you can, but in Tagit here, it's just yellow. There's also this little backlight button here. If you check this, you'll notice that it'll gray out the other text. And it's just showing you your highlights. Some people like that. And then, so right now we're in the Documents tab. If I go to the Highlights one next to it, I see here this interesting tag. That's the only one we have right now. But now there's a one here because we have one highlight. So I could click this, the, the tag, and it's showing me that highlight. And it's telling me the file that it's in, the, the document and the tag assigned. I could click See All Highlights, but we just have the one. So let's go back and add some more. So I'll go back to documents and I'll just highlight this and I'll click new highlight. And now let's create a new one. So I'll click create a tag and I have them here. So let's call this justification and I can give it a description here, maybe something like arguments for independence from Great Britain, and I'll select, yep, save and close. So now that's highlighted and you see it's also yellow. I could add some more. So you can have more than one tag assigned to a highlight. So I'll just highlight this section, click new highlight. Uh, let's make a new tag. So maybe I'll call this one government. I'll say it's role of government and I'll sign that and I'll maybe also put interesting there. And then I'll just add 
a few more just to populate this. So now let's go back to highlights, the highlights tab. And we see here, now I have a few, uh, the count here is increased for each of these. Now you may sometimes have to refresh the page. Sometimes the changes aren't reflected right away, but this looks fine. So if we go to say that interesting uh, tag here, we see this one has two assigned to it. And I could click see all highlights now and now see all of the highlights. Now, if you're coding uh, without having codes generated already, you may find that a code that you're using isn't ideal anymore. You may want to rename it. So you could click edit, you could rename it, you could delete it, and you can merge them. So let's say I want to merge the justification and the interesting uh, tags here. I could go to edit. I could say merge. And let's say I want to merge interesting into justification. So right now, they each have two tags. So I'll merge it. And it looks like I have to refresh. So now justification has four, and the changes have, have happened. You can also make a hierarchy in your tags. For instance, maybe here I have one for government. Maybe I want one for monarchies. So I could create a tag here as well. And I already have it here. So what you do, I want government to be the, the higher tier there and I want monarchy under it. So I just need any kind of punctuation in between. So here I have government.monarchy. So this will be below government in the hierarchy. And then I created it. I can go back to my document. And I see here, let's see. King of England, so I can apply that. And then when I go back to my highlights, if I go to government, which is higher up in that hierarchy, you see that I'm seeing the lower tag as well. I'm seeing both. But if I go just to that government.monarchy, I'm just seeing that one. So if you're ready to start exporting these files so you can analyze them some more, you have some options. You can export the whole document that you were tagging here. Up in the right-hand corner here, you see export this view. I have a few options. Let's check out the HTML. So I see that it's showing me the highlights and it's showing me the, the tags. The uh, other formats here will look the same. You also could uh, export your highlights. So if I go to highlights and see all highlights, Again, I have this export this view button and I have um, some of those same file types, but I also have Excel and CSV. So maybe I want Excel here. And then it's, oh, it just took a second. So this is what that looks like. So maybe I want to analyze this. I could do some pivot tables right here in Excel. And then I could ex uh, export the whole project. So we talked about that. If I go over here to project info, we talked about that in the beginning where you could um, share your project. So here you could export it. You'll also see here, this is how you would collaborate if you're working in a server here, like we are right now, we're working in their server. So we could manage collaborators. So I, again, I have to have a free Taget account. So this is my username. If you know somebody else's username, you could put it here and then you could specify what permissions you want them to have. So say if it's a student in a lab, you might want them to be able to highlight uh, and tag. Maybe you don't want them to be able to delete any, any files, documents or projects. So you can do that. You can also export your code book here. So that would be your, your tags. So if I export this, I have a few options that we've seen, but I also have this QDC format. So this is a format you could use to import this into other um, qualitative data analysis software, for instance, some, something like InVivo. So that could be nice. All exported as a CSV.
And when I look at it, it's showing me the tags, the description, and the number of highlights. But then uh, just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to import one. I'll I have a different one saved here. I'll just go to, uh, I'll just delete this. And I'll create a new project. So if I go to project info here, I can import a code book. And we see here that it only wants a CSV for this. But I downloaded our code book as a CSV. And then when I click review, it's showing me the tags that I had. So I can select which ones I want to import. And I'll say create tags. Then I can go to highlights to check them out. So I see that they've been imported. It also, of course, has this interesting tag, which is there by default from Tagget. But I could delete that. So I could go to edit and delete tag. So that's a quick demo of Tagget. As you saw, it's pretty user friendly. They have a nice guide here that you can refer back to if you get stuck. So let's move on to Qualcoder because that's a little bit more robust. And I'll put a link for the Qualcoder page in chat. And again, it could be a little difficult to get everything installed. So don't worry about following along with anything. So Qualcoder, just like Teget, it's a free open source um, software. Let me try to make that a little bigger so you can see. Uh, now Teget, as we saw, can be used in a browser or you can install it on a local machine. Qualcoder can also be uh, downloaded via their GitHub page. We'll see in a second here in the download tab. And then you would just run the executable file. So Teget, as we saw, it's nice if you just want to code some text. But a benefit here of Qualcoder is that you can code text, images, video, and audio. And if you want to code audio or video, though, you will have to also install VLC Media Player here, which is also free. And uh, Qualcoder also has uh, the capabilities to um, transcribe audio and video. But to do that, you also have to have um, another piece of free software installed, which we'll see. So I already have Qualcoder downloaded. Um, now, one downside of, of Qualcoder is that you can't collaborate with another user in real time. However, you can work on the same project. Um, and as we see here, Qualcoder supports this open standard, this REFI QDA standard. So you could have somebody uh, share your project and they could maybe import it into um, another QDA software that supports that could be uh, proprietary as well. Uh, but let's go start, look how you would download it. Now, in this download tab, I'm on a Windows machine and it's easiest when you're on Windows. Um, we see here, here are the links if you want to install VLC. And this is what you would also need if you want to transcribe audio or video, this FFmpeg software. Um, we'll take a look at that. I haven't installed this yet, so we won't, but you can see what it looks like. So to go to their GitHub page, you'd go here. Now, since I'm on Windows, as I said, I would just go down to the bottom and I just uh, downloaded this executable file. Now you may have to specify, uh, give it permissions. What I had to do, I had to, once I had this downloaded, I right clicked it and went to properties and I had to check this box, this unblock box and then apply and run it again. You may have that issue but then you just run that, uh, that executable file. Now, if you're not on Windows, um, this GitHub page has a wiki here. And the wiki has a lot of nice um, instructions here. But under introduction, you'll see some installation uh, instructions if you're on a different operating system, because it could be a little uh, different. So I have Qualcoder opened up here. I just ran the the file there. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it looks less user friendly. When you open it up, it may even be really teeny. The window, you may have to resize it. I think I'll just make it full screen here so we can see everything. Uh, when we open it up, it opens up on the action log. So this will show us the 
version we're using as well as our settings and what we've done with our current project. And as for settings, if you'd like to change them, you can go up to project and you go to settings. So I have a few options here. I can change that interface language here. I can change the font and the font size. Here you can select how often you want it to back up your project, uh, which you may want it to do often, as we'll see. If you're doing any transcribing, you can set uh, settings here for time format or speaker format. This code text chunk size setting here is if you have a really large file, you may want to specify um, the number of characters that you'll have because uh, really big files can get make it a little slow and laggy, so you may want to break it up. If you're into dark mode, you can change the style here or a different background color. Once you make this change, though, you'll have to restart for it to apply. And then here's where you could do some collaboration. So remember that Qualcoder doesn't allow real-time collaboration like other tools like Teget, but you can create a profile here for yourself. So I have one, it's already it's telling me I'm the current coder. You could uh, add yourself here and hit apply. So then if you're working on Qualcoder, let's say it's downloaded on one shared computer in a lab, somebody else could log in, change, go to their profile, do their coding saved under their profile. So you could do that. Alternatively, you could zip the folder for your project, which we'll see in a second, and you could share it with collaborators so that then they could use it on a different machine. So we'll go to uh, starting a new project. So to do that, you go to Project and Create New Project. So what it's doing here, it's going to create a folder. So I already have a couple here, so let's call this Qualcoder demo, and it's just going to save to my desktop here. So let me find it. I hope you can see this. So what it did is it created a folder here on my desktop, because that's where I saved it. So this has my um, file here for the project. And these folders, they're empty right now. But as I populate this folder in Qualcoder, as I create files or import them, copies of them will go in this folder. So this is what you might zip and send to somebody if you want to collaborate. And also if you uh, open it up and you want to open a project, that's what you would go to. So for your project here, up in the project tab, you could create a little memo for your project, some notes. So maybe you want to Add some details about your project. Um, this is the version, maybe who's working on it, details like that. So you could do a memo for the whole project. And then at this point, we can start to add some files and some cases and some attributes. So to load some files, we go up here to the Manage menu. And we have some options. We'll start with Manage Files. And it's blank because we have nothing here. One thing we can do, we could just create a file right here. So there's a little uh, pencil icon here. I can create a text file. So here I might say, it's example text. Here is some example text. And then once I have this created, if I want to view it, I could either double click it, or there's a little eye icon here that I could click to view it. But I can also uh, import files. So there's a button here next to that eye icon for import file into the project folder. And so that folder that we just looked at, so what I'll be doing, I'll just make it, be making a copy, putting a copy into that folder. So I have some folder uh, files here on my desktop. I have a few. I have an image file. I have a, an audio file. Now to select multiple, I'm on Windows, um, a Windows PC, so I'm hitting Control. I think it'd be Command on a Mac. And then I have these four transcripts. These are fictional interviews with students. So I'll select all of them, and I'll open them up. So from here, again, these are just random files for this demo. If I wanted to change the name, I could right-click. I can do some things, including renaming. Uh, and remember, any changes you make here, these are just copies in that project folder, so you're not altering the, the originals. 
uh, we have this memo column here. So these would be some notes for yourself. So maybe for this example text file we made, maybe that was a, a survey response from a student, something like that. So I could double click here. Um, I could say this is a survey response. We have this um, image here. I just double clicked that and this is a classroom picture. So maybe I want to add a memo here. I could say desks in a classroom with a blackboard. So now we can also have attributes. And these are just uh, variables that will describe, they could describe files, cases, which we'll see in a second. They can be numeric or character um, fields. So I can add some attributes uh, to these files here. There's a little plus icon here, add attribute. We see here character and numeric. So maybe I wanna know the source of these files. So we see it added that column. And then just like how uh, we did with memo, um, I could add double click here to add a source. So maybe these, I said these transcripts were fictional student interviews or surveys or whatever. So I could say student. And then these columns here, you could change the sort. You could filter a little bit. So if I, if I right click here, I could change the sort here. Maybe I just want to look at uh, files where the source was a student. So I could click show this value and that limits it to get back to all the files. I could right click again, go to show all rows. So I imported those files, but you may have, let's say you have a, a survey, you might have a file with um, cases and attributes. So maybe it's a survey or an interview data. So I have this example spreadsheet here. It's really teeny, this is fictional. So these are four, those four student interviews. And it was anonymous, so they have an ID here, just one through four. And I had their major, their class year, so freshman, sophomore, et cetera. And so I have some attributes here, and then I have cases. So each participant here is a case. Case might be something else. It could be a, an event, anything, you're, anything you may want to apply files or, or attributes to. So I can import this, this file into Qualcoder. So to do that, I would go up to manage and we've already looked at manage uh, files here, but I have import survey. And then I have it right here. So this is um, asking me what I wanna import. We see it looks like what we just saw and it's made some assumptions here about the uh, fields here, it's, it thinks the ID one is numeric and the others are character, that's okay. And it's asking me press okay to import. Now we don't see anything. So if I wanna look at those attributes, I can go up to manage and manage attributes. So here we see, remember when we were in manage files, we added that one attribute source and it's assigned a file. So we see that here. And then we see these other two that we just imported. And they're assigned a case because those cases were those participants there. So from here, I could delete some, I could add another. So maybe I want one for library services and it's character and I'll assign it to those cases. So now we have another here and I could expand this, to see more. We also have another memo column here. So if I want some notes, so let's see like class year here, that that field name's a little ambiguous. So maybe I wanna specify here. that these are freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So we also imported those cases. So let's look at those. So if we go back to manage, so we've looked at files and attributes. So here we have managed cases. And we see this looks like that uh, spreadsheet that we had. Um, so we see this new attribute we added to it. There's another memo column here, but we also see there's a files column here. So I can assign files to a case. In this case, the cases are 
um, students, participants, and I have those four transcript files, um, one for each of these students. So I could uh, manually add more cases here or import more, but uh, let's assign some files. So I can just click here and it's showing me uh, files here that I've imported. So again, these transcripts correspond to a case. So I could just uh, click one and add selected files to case. And I can just keep doing that here. So we did that here in the manage cases uh, window. You could also do that um, in the manage files window. So if I go back to manage files, we see there is this case column and it looks like now it's, uh, remember these were our cases, the IDs, looks like it's, they're assigned. But if I wanted to assign from here, I could right click here and assign case to file. So you could do the same thing in multiple windows here. Uh, in the manage uh, menu here, you may have also seen manage journals. You can have journals in Qualcoder, so you may want to keep track of your activities. Uh, different coders could have different journals. So I can create one here with a little pencil icon. I'll call it November 2023. Um, this is a journal for the Qualcoder tutorial. And then you see the little search box here. So if I want to search for a term, I could enter a term and then these little uh, arrows here, I can search within here. So you see it's matching. If I click this, um, check this box here, I can search within all journals. I just have the one, but it would go through um, the other journals. And you can also export these journals right here if you'd like to do that. Uh, so now one of the benefits of Qualcoder um, is the ability to work with audio or video files. So to use these features, as we as we saw, you need to have that free software VLC installed. And if you want to do transcription, uh, you'll have to have that FFmpeg installed as well. Um, and the links to those, as we saw are in, in the Qualcoder web page, if you go to their um, GitHub, you can see the links there. So I have a, a brief audio file here, and let's see. Gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. We are expecting some turbulence. So this file, you notice when I imported it, it created automatically this little blank text file associated with it. So this is for that, that transcript. So I could just populate, I could manually do it here or in the audio file here, I could add it here. So if you want uh, to use, they have some tools here with this little gear icon. They, uh, you could use some online speech text services here that they are connected to. But again, you need that FFmpeg installed, which I don't have installed, but you could try these. And then you, you probably have to clean it up a bit. Or you could do it manually here. Um, and they have some shortcuts here. So um, like control N, you could add speaker names and then to add it, it's control one. You have control T for uh, the timestamp. So you have some shortcuts and you could also we'll just add some text here so we have something. Uh, so you could do that yourself. So that's transcription. You can play around with that on your own if you're interested. Uh, but let's start coding. So uh, remember with Taget, all the codes be yellow. Here in Qualcoder, there'll be uh, different colors and you can change the colors and the color scheme. But you could also uh, pick one that's colorblind safe. So if you go up to the coding, menu up here and you'll see color scheme. So we don't see any codes here yet, but we see here the perspective, it's normal vision 
And but down here at the bottom, you can change perspective. So you'll watch what happens here. We have red weak, red blind, and so on. So that's an option. Uh, let's start coding, though. We'll start with uh, those text interviews, those transcripts. So I'd go up to coding at the top here, this menu, and we see our options here. We have text, images, audio, video, and PDF. Um, now, the PDF, that's somewhat new. Uh, the latest version made that a little bit better. It's a little experimental uh, still, so we won't look at coding PDFs today, but we'll start with text. Here we have our text files, um, and if we click one. We can see the text here on the right. In the bottom, this is where our codes would be, so we don't have any here by default, like Taget had that interesting tag by default. So to create some, we would right click in this box, and I have add a new code. So let's go to that first transcript. So we, we see here it's, it's small. Uh, so I see here they're talking about spaces here. So I right click in this box and add a new code. And I'll call this one spaces. And then just like in Taget, I can uh, just drag, I can highlight here some of the text, and then I'll click the spaces tag and we notice that the count here went up. There's now one and it's the text is highlighted. I can keep going. Maybe I want this one as well. And I click it, now it's two. And then once I have these tags, if I hover over it, it's telling it's telling me what the, the assigned code is here. If I right click it, I can unmark it. I can make a memo. I could designate it as important. And when I do that, you see it makes it bold. But I can also, uh, hit, there's a button down here, a little star button in the lower left corner. And this will toggle on and off showing those important flagged uh, tags there. So let's look at the next transcript here. So for this one, I see we're talking about services and resources here. So I'll add some more tags here. So I go back and I right click, add a new code. Maybe I want one services and I'll have uh, resources. And you see here, there are different colors. If I wanted to change these, I could right click them. I could rename, delete, so on, but also change the color. So I'll add some more here. Maybe this, we have a 24 seven chat feature and then I'll click services. And then they talk about finding articles. I'll mark that as resources. Uh, I could add memos here as we see. So maybe for resources, we saw that when I right clicked it, I could add a memo here. Maybe I wanna specify these are collections and equipment, et cetera. So you can have memos all over. You could also have categories for these codes. So we saw that here when you were right clicking here, there's add a new category. So maybe I want one libraries. And now to add uh, codes to it, either I could click it, right, cl uh, right click it and add codes to it, or I could drag and drop my existing ones into it and we see it's starting to populate, and then it's, it's within this category. I can also merge codes um, the same way by dragging and dropping into it. So let's say with this articles text here, maybe I initially had a, a code called articles, and then I wanted to make it resources. So let's, I'll make a new one called articles, and that color is not good, so I'll right click, and I'll change that color. Maybe I'll make this one yellow. And then if I wanted to merge, I would just drag and drop it into resources. And it's asking me here, that font's really small, but it's asking me if I want to merge articles into resources. I say yes. So we didn't have anything tagged with that. So nothing changed, but you get the idea. You also have a search uh, box here. So I want to search for the term library, 
here I'd use these buttons and it's matching. I can make it case sensitive by checking this box or search within all the files by checking that one. You can also do some auto coding in Qualcoder. So you see these buttons here, the little wands, these are for auto coding. I won't do anything now, but what you would do, you would select the, the code you want and then you'd select which auto code option you want. And let's say I wanted it to find the word library everywhere and code it with spaces so I could do that. Uh, and you'll, you see there is this undo auto coding button. I think that's the only magical undo button in Qualcoder. Unfortunately, your other options, we've already seen if you wanted to undo a, a mark here, you could right click it and unmark. There is this X button here if you want to delete all codes by this coder from this file. Otherwise, you could just upload the, the file again and start fresh. But I don't think there's another magical un, undo button. So that uh, when we first looked at the settings there, backing up is important. And remember, again, you're not editing your original files, but just be careful. And I hope in the future, maybe they add a, a different undo button. So we looked at that audio file we had. So here's that transcript that we made. So we could code this right here. So let's say I wanted a, a new code. I'm right clicking, maybe one called safety. So I could click that. I could do it right here, but I also could uh, code a little bit within that audio file. So if I go up to coding and code audio video, so here we have that file. And what I could do is I could create little segments within it and code those. So I'll, I'll click Start Segment. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. And then I could hit End Segment. And then I could go to my codes and I could right click one. And you see Assign Segment to Code. And now it's coded this little segment which I could then right click. I could have, again, memos and delete it and play from the beginning, et cetera. So I also had that one image file. So let's go back to coding. So we've looked at everything here except uh, image and we won't look at PDFs today. So code image and I'll click it. You may need to change your window here so you can see more, resize it. So we have this, uh, image of a classroom. So maybe I want to note we have some technology here. So we'll go and right click and add a new code. Now to add these, I would click the code that I want. And then I would drag over, uh, highlight what I want. And now well, it's hard to see with the green, but you can see the, the mark there. And if I hover over it, it's telling me it's um, uh, tagged with that technology tag. and I'm the coder. And if I right click in that box, I could again add a memo, I could unmark it, I can make it an important mark. And that little star button that we used before is right here. So if I toggle it now, we just have the one. So it's not exciting, but I could add another, let's say I want to furniture code here. So I've got that. So then if I toggle this button, we see it's showing me the ones marked as important. I can't export this. So right here, there's a button to export this image as a, an HTML. And it's going to want to save it. Saved it to my desktop here. So here we see the memo I'd added. Here are those tags. And if I hover, it's showing me the, the code disappeared right there. Uh, the, the, these export buttons, you'll see those in the other um, windows we were in as well. So now uh, we looked at export for here, but you may want to make some reports and export those. Um, Qualcoder has a lot of nice reports. So let's go to the reports menu here. So we'll look at the first one here, coding reports. So this one will um, look at how the codes were applied. 
So we see here, these are our files. These are those cases we had. Here are our codes. I can select one or, or more than one. If I hold control here, I'm getting multiple. I could just drag with the ones that I want. I could also right click and select that way. So I'll just select all of them and all of the codes. And to just run a basic report with the files and the, and the codes here, there's a little gear icon here. That's the search. So I just run that. So it's showing me uh, those codes and the file and the coder. If I right click for view here, I can do some things including view and context. So here's the whole image with text. It would show me some more text around that tag. If I wanted to see that context right here in the report, we see a little box I can check here and then I could rerun the report. So now I have that here. If I just wanted to see the those that we flagged as important, I could rerun the report. And then the statistics one. So it's showing me uh, the count by code here. It's also count within a, a file and the percentage of that file with the code. We could also search um, a report with just some text. So maybe I want to find the, the phrase quiet study. So I could run that and it finds uh, that file. I could also um, filter by some of those attributes. So the button here is this little button here. So we see our attributes here. Now remember I had um, class year. So maybe I just want to look at the, the freshman files. So I could say maybe equals freshman for this. And then when I run the report again, I have to select uh, my files. So this was the, the transcript that had that attribute. And to remove that, I can go back to that button and I can clear. Uh, I can also have a little matrix here with these. So let's say I'll highlight all of the, the files again and all of the cases, highlight everything here. These are my options. So let's try codes by case. And then I'll run this. So we didn't do a lot of coding, so this isn't terribly exciting, but we see here are four cases and these were our uh, codes. And so we can see it arranged this way and here it is arranged the usual way. And of course, from here, we see you can export all of these with these uh, file formats. Uh, so that's this basic coding reports. Um, let's go back up to reports. So another one we have is coding comparison. So with coders here, it's just me right now. But if you had multiple profiles, you could compare them, uh, how much they agree. We also have uh, code frequencies reports. These are what you'd expect, the, the frequencies. And of course you can export this. The file and code summaries, those are um, just some basic info. Then I wanted to look finally at graphs here, at um, charts. So we have a few options here. You can have pie charts, bar, sunburst, tree maps, heat maps. You can filter. A number of ways here, the coder, the files, category, et cetera. Um, so let's look at a pie chart here and I'll do code frequency. Now, when I click here, it's just going to automatically create it. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything else. So here's that pie chart. Um, if you wanted to save this as an image up here in the corner, you can download this as an image file. You could also check this box if you wanted to save that HTML file when it generates. Let's look at a heat map. And again, we didn't do much, so this isn't very exciting, but it could be more exciting. So that's, um, there are some other reports, other things you can do, but that's a basic uh, overview of Qualcoder. Um, I hope you have enough to continue on your own. As I said, Qualcoder has a lot of nice 
uh, instructions here on their wiki from on their GitHub. Um, I can go into more details with a lot of those reports that we were looking at. So we have a little time for some questions, but feel free to contact me with any other questions. And thank you for joining. The recording should probably be sent out probably today. I'll stop the recording.